You might recall that back in November, I made a video discussing how Disney had basically purchased Star Wars. Yes, that's true. Disney bought Star Wars, for those of you who have just forgotten. Anyway, um, I'm not really worried about that at all, because why should I worry about it being too kid-friendly? It already was too kid-friendly with the prequel trilogy, particularly Episode 1. Anyway... Um, since then, I have heard that J.J. Abrams, who has directed the two most recent Star Trek movies, has been brought on to helm the new Star Wars movie, Episode 7, which will be out in May of 2015, I believe. And ever since I heard that, I thought, that's great, that's great, but who's writing it? I'm more concerned about who's writing as opposed to who's directing. A director... A director plays a very vital role, but I think a really good writer is far more important. Now, a writer-director, that's also good. In fact, that's probably the best of both worlds. But I did find out who was writing Episode 7. It turns out that Michael Art, who directed, who wrote Toy Story 3, is going to be writing Episode 7 for Star Wars, and that turned out to be an outstandingly good movie. So, I think the franchise is in pretty good hands there. When George Lucas was kicked upstairs and pushed out of the way, it was probably the best thing that could have ever happened to Star Wars. I mean, why not? Roddenberry was kicked upstairs and pushed out of the way when Star Trek uh, was going into the development for its second film. And, you know, two people who had never worked with Star Trek had worked on that before and made it sensational. You know, Nick Meyer and, of course, <clears throat> and, of course, Harv Bennett. But anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Star Wars Episode 7, 8, and 9, since there will be three new ones. As I said, writing for Episode 7 will be Michael Art, who wrote Toy Story 3. But I have also found out that writing for 8 and 9 is actually veteran writer Lawrence Kasdan, who had worked in Star Wars before with Empire and Jedi, co-writing those scripts as well. So, that means the franchise is in good hands. He'll be working on 8 and 9, by the way, while Michael Art works on 7. So we know the franchise is going to be in good hands, not to mention familiar turf. So that's a good thing, of course. And, of course, his track record with both Star Wars and Indiana Jones is practically flawless. So, I got no complaints there. So, I guess there's really nothing to worry about at all. Well, for Star Wars Episodes 7, 8, and 9, particularly Episodes 8 and 9, I mean, if Kasdan's going to be doing those, then we know they're going to be great, because we did such a great job on both Empire and Jedi. Actually, Kasdan was also more for the idea of going into Jedi that Han Solo ought to sacrifice himself for Han and for Luke and Leia. Of course, George was against that. Then again, maybe that all worked out for the better, because Han Solo was equally as funny in Return of the Jedi as he was in the other two films, so... Maybe there's nothing to worry about there. It's good to have new hands, fresh hands on the project, as well as old familiar hands, too. So, I think that Star Wars Episodes 7, particularly 8 and 9 later on, they are going to be something outstanding. And I understand also they probably might be changing the retcon a little bit, meaning that they're probably going to tinker around with the expanded universe some. <clears throat> now, in some ways this is a good thing, and in some ways this could be a bad thing. I'd hate, them, I'd hate for them to have to undo the whole Mara Jade General Thrawn thing, because I kind of like Mara Jade, and I like the idea that the new Jedi Order are allowed to take wives and raise families, because in that expanded universe story, of course, Luke and Mara married. What I hope they do change is the death of Chewbacca in the expanded universe, because Chewie was my favorite character. You know, it, why not kill off someone no one cares about, like fucking Jar Jar Binks or something? But anyway, I mean, if they do that in one of the in one of the episode in one of the next episodes, seven, eight, or nine, whatever, that could only make the whole thing even better. I mean. There have been times when Disney has killed off some cute characters uh, to benefit their stories. But as far as I know, Disney's not really in that much involved in the project. It's just whatever whatever J.J., Lawrence, and Michael are going to do with this franchise. So, 
I'm not really worried at this point anymore about what's going to happen with episodes 7, 8, and 9. If they decide to bring Justin Bieber in there as a Jedi in training or more Ewoks or something, then that's the time for panic. Then that's the time for outrage. But, for the time being, I think I'm just going to let things flow and let the chips fall where they may. Hopefully not on our heads. But anyway, for now I'm pretty confident that episodes 7, 8, and 9 will turn out just the way us fans have always wanted to maybe even erase the stain of the prequel trilogy because, well, I don't have to explain that any further. I mean, you saw what messes they were. And 4, 5, and 6 were great. <clears throat> and so, who knows, 7, 8, and 9? They could be outstanding. And as I said in my November review, wouldn't it be nice to have at least one, maybe two more Star Wars movies that actually are damned good? I mean, no longer to say, hey, those three original films were awesome. Let's see more of those. And yeah, we might get three, maybe even just two, more awesome movies. So, yeah. Whatever they do with episodes 7, 8, and 9 at this point, I'm all for it. As long as it doesn't include any more Ewoks or more teen stars or that sort of thing. But personally, I would love to see an, an, aged, Obi an aged Luke Skywalker uh, take on the role of Ben Kenobi as a mentor to a younger Jedi in training. That would be something. I also know that everyone else is pretty much signed on to do 7, 8, and 9. And also the two droids will be back. And Han will be featured probably in a smaller role because he's older now. But to see Luke as a Jedi Master training a younger generation of Jedi, I think that would be awesome. Those are my thoughts. I am excited to find out what J.J., Michael, and Lawrence are going to do with this franchise, and I'll see you next time. May the Force be with you. Always. Oh, before I wrap up, I do have to make an apology. I meant to say Battle Front 3, not Battle Force 3. Sorry about that. I don't know what kind of brain fart I was having when I made that review back in November, or that short little video, but I swear to God, this sort of memory loss will never happen again. Never.